Hey, what's up everyone? So I was on vacation, so I'm gonna be a couple days past the official announcement of a camera that is finally, finally exciting. And one of a line that I've been a fan of ever since kind of it came out, well, uh, since the GR2 when I first really learned about it years and years ago, but we just heard about the Ricoh GR3. Wait, we already have the three, but have you heard about the Ricoh GR3 X? Okay, Eric, so it sounds like it's just, uh, the same camera, nothing much changed. It's the same thing, it's just marginal upgrade, right? Well, no, and this is why it's actually exciting, but a little bit of preference and the boring part that people skip to, etc. but the Ricoh GR line and is probably one of the most successful and one of the most popular for street photography or for just putting a, a nice compact camera in your bag that's very reliable, you know, very easy to use, set up everything, etc. like that. It's a compact camera, fixed lens, it retracts, so it's it's just super easy to use, but it's um it's just outstanding. The image quality, everything that goes into it, that macro capability, everything you could think of, it ticks a mark. But and I've I've said this in my past, and you can watch any of my Rico videos uh, about the GR and everything like that, is that the when the lens the lens was wide. The lens was always a little bit too wide for a lot of situations, and a lot of shooters and especially myself, I've found that we are shooting probably a little bit more tighter now. And especially before, like, you know, the world kind of, you know, went down in a downward spiral. I was really liking a 50 millimeter lens for like street photography stuff. So the GR, the Fuji X100 line, etc., have been very, very popular for street photographers. But this new GR3X upgrade, I'll even say, I even feel it probably should be a new camera at this point. It is now, it will now have a lens of 26.1 millimeters, f2.8 still, but it's equivalent, 35 millimeters, is a 40 millimeter lens. And I think that's kind of groundbreaking for that camera alone and a compact, not interchangeable lens camera. 40 millimeters is a big deal. So it's really cool to see Rico really go down this route. So that new lens, I think it's gonna be absolutely mind blowing. The review's already out there and everything like that. I just really wanted to engage in this discussion about it. Um, so they upgraded that, a newer sensor as well, three axis, uh, new, newly upgraded sensor for the most part, the built-in AF stuff is all kind of, you know, marketing hype and, you know, herky-jerky, but the thing with that is, the Rico line has always kind of been a little bit, not necessarily the fastest autofocusing in the world, so I do expect it to improve a little bit, but if you see, as you've seen, probably in some of the reviews and hands-on, which no one should be doing reviews at this point, because it just came out for like a day people had the cameras um you know you you kind of see that to an extent but if you're really a, a rico shooter if you're into the gr line you're using your zone focus your snap focus and everything like that your predetermined distance and you kind of know how that works anyway so that shouldn't be that big of a deal as it is but the one thing i will say i'm, I'm excited to see too and it, and it seems like it's performing very very well is an updated eye detect and face detect auto focusing as well so that's cool to see that in there but then there's this like deep depth of field priority thing but i think that's kind of gimmick as well you can check out other kind of hands-on and stuff with like that i know some people complained that now there there's this upgraded one that there's still no weather sealing but you're really not going to get weather sealing in a camera like this especially with the retractable lens to an extent just because of how it works when the thing closes sucks in air that's how you get air and stuff in, in inside these glasses and stuff like that it's very very marginal doesn't happen a ton but i think weather sealing should not be the big of a deal but then there's one last pain point for a lot of people that's this one gr3x still doesn't address and once again this still has a bit on the cameras but there's still going to be no evf built into it too bad it's 2021 use the screen it tilts touch all that kind of stuff that's how it's gonna be. If you're not shooting weddings or something where you really need an eye piece for it, um, adapt because the EVF thing is a really kind of boring topic at this point. So we're gonna... So all that being said, once again, there's really nothing insane to say here, but I think it's probably one of the most exciting announcements we've heard throughout this entire year. And actually something that got me excited for once about cameras just because the, the Rico GR line has always been very, very good, very, very reliable. Um, and it addresses a big pain point with the new lens on it that I think fits very, very well for its purpose. And I do think that it'll probably become 
the king camera slash lens thing of street photography for the most part. I mean, the person behind it is, but the, the gear wise related, this is a very, very cool update. And I think that's going to sell like hotcakes, like thick, thick butter hotcakes with sharp on it. <sighs> this is the GR that I'm tearing apart here, but that's really, thank you. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm going to do my best to get hands on because I really want it, you know, a lot. Um, just because of what it's going to be, but it should be about a thousand dollars and releasing in mid-October So we're just a little probably under a month away from seeing it actually hit the stores yet again It's probably a little pricier than it should be I always felt the camera should be in like the seven hundred dollar range But that being said the Ricoh GR the Rico GR3 X He's excited